Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivers, the Carb Addiction Doc. And today we're going to talk uh, about something that is entertaining to young kids and adults. Pee. Pee. P-E-E. Pee. Urine. And we'll also talk a little bit about hydration. So, the urinary system is ultimately a soluble waste treatment facility. The kidneys exchange um, harmful toxic products and excess fluid that we've taken in and pees out the effluent. So it's a soluble waste system. But it is also a very conservative system. It is excellent at exchange. And it conserves water because for the most part humans have existed in a water-deprived setting where we didn't necessarily have a secure access of water, of hydration. So we've developed a very uh, uh, tight exchange phenomenon to retain water. We're very good at retaining fluid, retaining water. And we're also very good at solute exchange, getting rid of toxic, soluble waste products and exchanging them for things that we need. And the two most critical things are water, H2O itself, which we are very conservative about, and the second one is salt, sodium chloride. Those are the two most important things that the human body, the kidney system, is designed in a very complex way to conserve. Now, we'll get back to that in a second, but here's an interesting thought. And the reason I'm making this video is I was out walking my dog, Tabo, and whenever we walk, he'll go out there and he'll pee, and you know what? His urine is always extremely concentrated. It's always a dark yellow. Now, Tabo is a, a pure carnivore. He's a carnivore dog. He always has access to water. He gets fed twice a day. So a little bit like me. I eat once a day. He eats twice a day. But he's a carnivore dog. Dogs are kind of carnivore, except for the grains and the crap that they put into dog food these days. Be that as it may, all mammals, all mammals, all mammals, and, and humans are still part of the mammalian species. Some of us are insects, but most of us are mammals. <laughs> Sorry. We're mammals. And all mammals have highly concentrated urine. All mammals are designed to be water conservationistic at the renal level. Except modern urine, modern humans. Modern humans pee dilute urine because we over drink water. We over hydrate. We've, I've got to drink 64 gallons of water a day, whatever, I can't remember what the number is, but I think it's 64 gallons of water a day is the recommended number. Isn't that right? <laughs> no, obviously not. But it is ridiculous how much water we believe we should drink. Look at the majority of hunter-gatherer societies, how conservative they are with water, because water is a precious commodity. And here's the key thing. The, the human body uses salt to regulate water volume and thereby uses salt to regulate blood pressure and vascular dilation and vascular concentration. So water and salt go hand in hand. And, and humans existed along shorelines be they lake shorelines or seashore lines, we had adequate access to animal products from the water and from those that came to drink the water. So more and more we evolved to eat animal products, but we had access to salt. Salt is a, not a condiment. Salt is an essential part of the human diet. And the human body has a whole system called the aldosterone, renin angiotensin system that governs salt in the human body. In fact, most of the blood pressure medications that people take to lower blood pressure mess with that aldosterone, renin, angiotensin system or the water retaining capacity of the kidneys. So the kidneys use salt to retain water. That's their job. And the kidneys uh, and the colon uses, uses uh, salt to get rid of excess water to make a carnivore's poop soft. But the kidney is very conservationistic when it comes to water, and we way overhydrate. The thirst scent is really cool. When you're thirsty, you, it'll, it'll allow you to drink. It'll tell you, dude, drink. And when you've had enough, you've had enough. 
But to consciously force yourself to drink all the time is anti-malian. And it is damaging to the kidneys. Now, the flip side of that, humans are designed to live in ketosis. Ketosis means we're designed to burn fat. Fat is hydrophobic. It doesn't like water. It doesn't need water. In order to burn fat, you really need very, very, very little water. The body doesn't like water when you're in ketosis. However, we've migrated to becoming a glucogenic or a, a species, the only mammalian species that lives in glucosis which means we become sugar burners. And sugar is highly hydrophilic. It loves water. It dissolves in water. It has to have water. Every molecule of sugar has to be combined with a molecule of water. So we're waterlogged. We have this ton of water. And the body doesn't like sugar. It doesn't like that swelling from the water that comes with sugar. So the body stores the sugar as glycogen, which doesn't like water. Or it converts the sugar to fat, to triglycerides, which again are hydrophobic. So now you're sitting with this bucket of water in your body and nothing to hang on to it. So you become waterlogged. Your blood pressure goes up. You swell up like a toad. All that interstitial fluid. And you pee like a racehorse. Why do racehorses pee? Because they give them Lasix. That's where that saying comes from. So we've completely mismanaged fluids. Folks, healthy mammalian urine is highly concentrated. Not, of course, to the point of damage but highly concentrated, and the body is very conservative with fluid. If you live in ketosis, in fat-adapted ketosis, and you have a decent amount of salt on board, your body can get rid of excess salt through sweat and through the colon. But we've got to write that ship. We've got to write that overhydration ship. Tim Noakes wrote a whole book on waterlogging on a close friend of his who died at the finish line of a marathon because she drank so much water with sugar that she became waterlogged in her brain. And it was the anti-Gatorade uh, um, book that spoke the truth against hydrating with high sugar-containing electrolyte solutions. The antithesis of mammalian health. Electrolytes are great, Water has value, but not with sugar, folks. Not with sugar. Not with sugar. There's the enemy. Now, one final comment, and you've heard me talk about this if you follow my work. The other reason I drink coffee is as a bridge. But that's how much coffee I drink each time. I don't drink coffee. I sip on it. That cup was made about three hours ago. It's ice cold. But I'm using that as a mind-cleansing moment, still staying within the parameters of hydration. I'm not drinking excessive amounts of soda or juices or alcohol to get high. My coffee serves two purposes, a little bit for hydration and a lot as a mind-cleansing moment, as a snack without calories, so therefore it's called a bridge. So yeah, modern humans can use that if you've had an addiction to carbohydrates as a way to activate your endorphin system, nothing to do with hydration and nutrition, but as a way to activate the endorphin system with something that isn't a snack, doesn't cause caloric harm. And I have little sips from time to time throughout the day, probably 15 to 20 little sips a day. But you know what's cool? And this is how the, be the beautiful thing about the human body. Those little sips of a bridge that I don't force myself to do, but I have sips of them throughout the day, equate to about how much volume I need on average per day, whether it's one liter or three liters. It depends on how hot it is, depends on how physically active I've been, but my body tells me how much I need. Between my brain and my body, that regulates my hydration. If anybody ever tries to tell you how much water you should drink, they know nothing about human biology. Because I don't know and you don't know, but your body knows. And listen to your body, listen to that beautiful negative feedback system called the thirst satiety system that is built on salt, salt that is, is governed by salt dilution in your mouth and in your stomach and your intestine. As salt gets concentrated, salt, remember that thing that's so bad for us? As salt gets concentrated, it increases thirst. 
as soon as you dilute that salt, it sends a signal back to your brain that says, dude, you've had enough. Very tightly regulated. And it works in all mammals. We've just decided to improve on what God and nature does by overriding that and deciding we have to drink 64 gallons of water a day. I think that's the number. Is that that's what they tell us? 64 gallons? I think so. Maybe I'm wrong. But it doesn't matter. I don't care. And I'm being facetious. But it's absolutely true. Don't waterlog yourself. Listen to your body and drink as little water as you need, not as much as you can get in. We haven't thought about water so much, but we've screwed it up as modern non-mammals. Return to our mammalian roots. Drink water as the effluent of our soluble waste system. And you will have healthy kidneys, a healthy bladder, and a healthy elimination system. I know I'm going to get a barrage, or I suspect I'm going to get a barrage. Oh, you got to drink. What about this? What about... That's fine. I have no issue with scientific criticism or for people proving me I'm wrong. Bring that on. I, I, I love to learn. I'm not an expert. I'm a student. Educate me, but don't criticize me. Don't criticize me. Don't be a troll. Support what we say. If it makes you think, if you agree or disagree, I've done my job today. But let's rethink hydration. And let's be safe about it. Take care. Good luck. And as the ad goes, stay thirsty, my friends. <laughs>